Southwest Stages is a nonprofit media organization which strives to advance and promote the art of live music, to celebrate cultures, and unite communities throughout the Southwest through the recording, archiving, and broadcasting of community musical events. A list of artists recorded by Southwest Stages, our broadcast schedule, and partner stations can be found on our website, southweststages.org. From the heart of the Southwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico, this is Southwest Stages. I'm your host, John Strader. On this edition of Southwest Stages, we'll travel back in time to the Wild West to the 2007 Thirsty Ear Festival in Santa Fe, New Mexico, to bring you an evening of music and interviews with electric slide blues legend Joe Lewis Walker. Each year, the Thirsty Ear Festival features a mix of blues, Americana, and folk music in one of the most unique settings in the Southwest, the Eves Movie Ranch, just south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Eves Ranch is a working western movie set built in 1969 for the movie The Cheyenne Social Club with Jimmy Stewart and Henry Fonda. And since that time, the Eves Ranch has been the backdrop for the filming of countless classic western movies. The Thirsty Year Festival is held annually on Labor Day weekend and closes down the summer with three days of music, food, and fun. In 2007, the festival featured an incredible artist who's a modern blues legend in the world of electric slide guitar, Mr. Joe Lewis Walker. Walker was born on Christmas Day in 1949, and he started playing guitar at the tender age of 14. By the age of 16, he'd left home and ended up in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district, rooming with the influential guitarist Mike Bloomfield. During his early days in the Haight, Walker was exposed to some of the legends of rock and blues, and during that time he played with artists like Steve Miller, Jimi Hendrix, The Grateful Dead, Lightning Hopkins, Magic Sam, and many others. By 1975, he was burned out on the scene and was in desperate need of a change. So he headed in a totally new direction by spending the next 10 years singing with a gospel group, and you can still hear that gospel influence echoing in Walker's songwriting and singing to this day. Then in 1985, he went back to his blues roots and formed the group The Boss Talkers and released his first album, Cold Is The Night, in 1986. Since that time, Joe Lewis has been playing the blues with a fierce dedication, and during his constant touring, He's won over fans around the world and garnered widespread critical acclaim. Joe Lewis Walker is a Grammy Award winner and has taken home several prestigious W.C. Handy Awards for Contemporary Male Artist of the Year and Band of the Year in the late 80s through the mid-90s. He's also recorded with blues legends like B.B. King, James Cotton, Bonnie Raitt, Taj Mahal, Shamika Copeland, and other artists like Huey Lewis, Branford Marsalis, and Ike Turner. So tune in this hour as we bring you music from his incredible performance and listen in as our special guest host, Jerome Putney Thomas, talks with the boss talker himself backstage in our mobile recording studio. So stay tuned for an evening with Joe Lewis Walker right here on this edition of Southwest Stages. <clears throat>
you be late. I'm gonna pick you up for a day to let. Love you. that we wrote for a car company. Uh, they reissued the GTO several years ago. And uh, we wrote the song for the, but the, um, the people in the front office, the business people didn't like the song. Well, won't say they didn't like it. They didn't understand it. It was, maybe it had a little bit too much feeling to it. So they chose to use a Neil Diamond song. And what happened was, as you can see, we ain't seen the GTO. I bet you ain't nobody has seen the new GTO, cause it came and went. And we told them, if they would have used our song, they might have sold some cars, cause I don't picture Neil Diamond in the GTO. This is entitled Slow Down GTO. I say Slow Down GTO, you say Slow Down GTO.
Hi everybody, my name is Joe Lewis Walker, the Boss Talker, and you're listening to Southwest Stage. Check us out. We are talking here with Mr. Joe Lewis Walker, and uh, he has just finished his set at this year's Thirsty Ear Festival in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico at the Eves Ranch. Well, it's a stone cold pleasure, man, to be here, and I appreciate uh, everybody being so kind to me, and especially uh, your friendship and kindness to me, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling. We're, we're just starting to get. I'm just starting to get back into it, and wow. you know wow. it's good to see so many people and old and new friends. Well, you know what? Anybody that's seen a Joe Lewis Walker show, you know, they're gonna want to go back and see it again and again. You know, and um, we are, you know, just fortunate to have you here in New Mexico because it sounds like w- with your itinerary, you're just all over the world. Yeah, well, it's you know uh, I'm fortunate. Uh, Henry Oden, the bass player, we've been together 21 years off and on, and. The drummer, 15 years off and on, the keyboard player quite a few years off and on. And, and during the course, guys come and guys go. You know, guys have, they have stopped playing for a while. Well, I, I had to keep playing because it's, you know, my name's on marquee. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in in, in that context, I, I did. I had to go all over, all over different places, all over the world, different mm-hmm. places that they, people hear your music and, you know, you, you, they want to see you, mm-hmm. and and they want to you know compare the the music they see here on the on the radio or on the on turntable to the the music that you play on stage, and, you know, and that, so you have to show up and and you know and you have to and, be there, and, yeah. And, yeah. Now, you've had you've had a, a few la- different labels, you know, but some of your best work, you know, has been on the high tone label going, as far as I'm concerned, mm. going back to the high tone, <clears throat> the early stuff, you know, and um, I just wanted to ask you, um, because, you know, believe it or not, my favorite albums are the ones you did live, because yeah, to me, that, like that. That, that seems very representative of what you do live, you know, and it's got that certain energy. You haven't made a live album since that time, huh? Well, we were going to, we were going to make, <clears throat> After the, we're gonna do the tenth. We were going to do the tenth year anniversary of Live at Slim's Volume One. Oh, but High Tone, we played two nights in a row, mm-hmm. and Phil Edwards brought the um, mobile truck, and he said, "Just play the way you play. Don't compensate just because we're recording live." Mm-hmm. And we did, and we did two nights, and out of two nights, we got three albums. There's another album. Oh, okay, because I know Live at Slim's. Not called Live at Slim's Three. It's called Riding High. And it's like, and it's got some soul songs on it that aren't on any of the other songs. Mm-hmm. So in essence, out of two nights, we got three albums, you know. But that's a testament to the band because the band had been on the road for five years. Mm-hmm. The horn section was perfect. The, you know, the background singing was pretty good. Uh, we had guests, well, you know, Yui mm-hmm. Lewis and this other people, and and it, it was a, uh, it was something that it did capture why we we were um, popular. You know, not only in the United States, but especially in England, where we won the BBC Award for Best Blues Band for a few years, and the Academy of Jazz in France, and many handies, and all the da da da, blammy and the grand. You know, it, it it just showed that the band, that band, that particular version of the band, mm-hmm. we were we were like on a mission together. You know, it just wasn't me. You know, I was on a mission anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, of course, when your name's on on the yeah. marquee, but I mean, it was they took pride in it. Like it was they, just like these guys. You see Spider play piano. Right. He takes pride in. You see him. He plays bass. He's a veteran. You see Jeff playing drums. He's gonna play his best. There's no off night for Jeff. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. There's no thing where well I don't feel good tonight. If he don't feel good, he's gonna play even harder. Right. You know. So right. I mean, in, in that context, I agree with you. The live albums were, uh, you know, quite a um, uh, and it was special because I couldn't have done it with any other versions of the band. I've had many great musicians in my bands, but that version of the band was. I mean, we ate slept, lived together on a bus, in a room, and wherever you at, you know, and I mean, we'd have to play on five minutes of notice and, and things like that. And, you know, when, when everything goes wrong about you, the PA system, woo, and the other, and that and the other, and you're sick and you got to play. Well, the band, they always pull together is what I'm trying to say. 
You know, there was never anything. Well, he didn't play too good tonight. Didn't mess with Nobody ever did it. You know, and it's like a team, like a, a, a sports team. You know, you, you know, and so and so's the star, but you know, the quarterback's great, but he ain't gonna throw sh- nothing unless the guy's blocking for him. Right. You know, the right. pitcher's great, but it, you know, unless the catcher's calling the, the, you know, what to throw, mm-hmm. he's reading out, you know, the the guy, you know, it. So it it made and that made it made me look real good, but I I, I everybody who heard that band knew. That, you know, well, you're a band. modest man, Joe, because your uh, your talents are obvious, you know, and you know everybody knows that. But you know, we have to say, you know, it's nice that you call your band the Boss Talkers. Yeah, you know, I well, mean, they are. That's you know, really a, you that's know. funny because it's, it goes back to when I was a kid. You know, it's like, yeah, the Boss Talkers. This is another song that's on our new record. Uh, this song is entitled "Picking the Blues."
The music of Joe Lewis Walker, captured live at the 2007 Thirsty Ear Festival held at the Eves Movie Ranch just south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm your host, John Strader, and you're listening to An Evening with Joe Lewis Walker right here on this edition of Southwest Stages. So stay tuned to the second half of the program for much more music and listen in as our guest host, Putney, continues his conversation with Joe Lewis Walker backstage coming up right after this short break. Next time on Southwest Stages, we'll travel to the Santa Fe Brewing Company in Santa Fe, New Mexico for music from the legendary Texas rock group, The Fabulous Thunderbirds. So tune in for an evening of rock and roll music and interviews with founding member Kim Wilson right here on an evening with The Fabulous Thunderbirds on the next edition of Southwest Stages. This is Putney, and we are having this conversation with Joe Lewis Walker, who's just finished his magnificent set at the Thirsty Ear Festival this year in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And, you know, he just flew in actually for this just one date. And so we are very pleased that he was spending the time with us tonight. Well, you know what? This brings up a, a good point, you know, because um, a couple friends of mine, we were talking, we were saying, you know, Joe Lewis Walker, he's got 18 albums out. He's got a lot of original stuff. But in concert, you know, he's going to do, you know, some um, T-Bone Walker and all this. Mm-hmm. Now, explain this, man, because, you know, it's like you you pay tribute to, to the greats, obviously. You know, obviously you're going to be playing to, you know, the greats, you know. But you've got such a large catalog of your own original material. Why Why is it that you would choose to do some cover tunes when you have so much of your own stuff that is Joe Lewis Walker material? Well, believe me, um, all, all that material, all those albums, when we made those albums, we had to tour behind those albums. And we toured incessantly. Uh, the, 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 the 90s, like, we toured incessantly everywhere from Ankara, uh, 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 Turkey, to Bangkok, Thailand. And, you know, we played those songs. We played those songs, we played those songs. Then the next album, we played those songs in Brazil. The next album, we played those songs in Japan and Australia. So, you know, you know, in, in, in essence, you know, you, you play, you know, you go out, you promote your albums, da 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 But then when you, when, you know, it, it becomes the cycle where record an album, tour for the album, come back, record another album, tour for the album for a year. And so in, in, in to keep things fresh and different, you know, you do different things. Like the T-Bone Walker song, uh, um, T-Bone Shuffle, um, I love the song, and I was asked, the gentleman said, well, Joe, would you be kind enough to be on my show, The Blue Summit? And I said, sure. And uh, the gentleman was B.B. King. And so he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, since B.B., since T-Bone was an influence on you and an influence on all the younger guys, let's, let's do the T-Bone Shuffle. And we did it, and I'm glad we did because we won a Grammy for it. Right. You know, whereas if we could have went and did Joe Lewis Walker 747, mm-hmm. and you know, it would have been it's cool, a great song, and right? I got more royalties because you know me and another guy wrote it. Right. But the T-Bone Shuffle it un- introduced another whole audience of people to the song, and you know, it became that 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 song off of that that it became a DVD, the Blues Summit, the album, the Blues Summit, and um, that's one of the main uh, highlights of it. Not just because I did it, but because that it was something that BB could do, and, and he could show his roots, and I could do it. And I can show roots all the way from him to me to hit to T Bone to him, from T Bone to him to, to me. You know, and so you got some twelve year old kid, 
in the room playing guitar like mm-hmm. we all did. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, well, what is this? You know, why is this song? Dun, dun, dun? Why do I always hear that lick? Well, that's where it came from. Mm-hmm. You know, it mm-hmm. didn't come from some Domin brothers. It didn't come from okay. uh, Johnny Copeland and, and, and the Showdown album where they, mm-hmm. they did it too. Mm-hmm. And, did, and, you know, but it's just the it's it's a it's a continuation of things and you know to answer your question it keeps things fresh you know for you mm-hmm. you know like my last album i did in paris it's entitled the one i was selling here in the day called playing dirty um the, the the record company said well joe why don't you just cut loose on the guitar do some things that you've been doing all your songs you've been doing that you haven't recorded and so i got to do some elmer james i got to do i got to do some uh, uh junior wells songs and a lot of people don't know those songs mm-hmm. and i got to do them my way whenever i do somebody's song i'll do it my way well they all sound like you know, way. they all the, sound like joe lewis walker right? you know even and, t-bone even yeah, t-bone you know, shuffle, i mean i'm not gonna play t-bone shuffle <laughs> like t-bone because i don't play like t-bone mm-hmm. but um i had you know fun you know doing playing dirty because not only was I able to play the guitar I was able to play the slide guitar I got to play piano I got to play uh, harmonica and I got to do a lot of things you know just like I would do if I was at the house with my son playing drums with somebody and, and, and teaching them stuff and, and I, oh, I want to play on my harmonica right. and I got to do it you know and it was a lot of fun we're going to do a song off our new album uh, the name of the album is entitled playing dirty and they have it for sale somewhere in the area here this is an old rock and roll song Entitled, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm able to rock and roll all night.
That's a good night. Hi, I'm Joe Lewis Walker, playing at the 2007 The Thirsty Ear Festival. We're going to fill your ears up at the Ease Movie Ranch in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and you're listening to Southwest Stages. <laughs>
Thank you so much and good night. The music of Joe Lewis Walker, captured live at the 2007 Thirsty Ear Festival held at the Eves Movie Ranch just south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. This year's Thirsty Ear Festival dates, lineup, tickets, lodging, and information on other Southwest Roots music events is available at thirstyearfest.com. I'm your host, John Strader, and you're listening to An Evening with Joe Lewis Walker right here on this edition of Southwest Stages. Joe Lewis Walker CDs, tour dates, downloads, biography, and more is available at myspace.com slash Joe Lewis Walker. Every night about this time, we dedicate a song to all those women. This is from Joe Lewis to you. This is entitled, Hey Sugar Mama, where you get all that sweet sugar from? Well, that's all the time we have on this edition of Southwest Stages. You've been listening to An Evening with Joe Lewis Walker, captured live at the 2007 Thirsty Ear Festival held annually on Labor Day weekend at the Eves Movie Ranch just south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'd like to thank Joe Lewis Walker for spending his time with us and allowing Southwest Stages to record his performance for this broadcast. I'd also like to thank some of the people who made this show possible. Thanks to... Mike Coster, and the staff and volunteers of the Thirsty Ear Festival, Southwest Roots Music, Miguel Castillo and Santa Fe Audiovisual, Thomas Wingate and the staff at the Eves Movie Ranch. Special thanks to our guest host, Jerome Putney Thomas, for his interview with Joe Lewis Walker. 
I'd like to take this time to thank our volunteer staff and crew. Thanks to Engineer and Technical Director, Chip Borton. Engineer and Operations Manager, Nola Daves-Moses. Engineer, Axel Corral. Special thanks to Daphne Strader, Gail Harvey, and the rest of our volunteers for all of their help and support. Information on upcoming Southwest Stages programs, member stations, broadcast times, services, and contact information is available at southweststages.org or myspace.com slash southweststages. I'm producer and host John Strader. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week for more great live music from around the Southwest right here on Southwest Stages. Tell me, sugar mama, where in the world did you get all of that sugar from? Tell me, sugar mama, That sugar from way up there in Santa Fe. I said Santa Fe on your daddy's movie farm. Every morning Live events have a vibrant quality and spontaneity that can't be recreated in a studio. Southwest Stages is committed to advancing the art of live music. They've recorded hundreds of internationally renowned artists and are now available for on-site stereo and multi-track recordings wherever you play. They also offer CD duplication, mobile studio rental, event archiving, and live remote radio broadcasts. More information is at southweststages.org. Next time on Southwest Stages, we'll travel to the Santa Fe Brewing Company in Santa Fe, New Mexico for music from the legendary Texas rock group the fabulous Thunderbirds. So tune in for an evening of rock and roll music and interviews with founding member Kim Wilson right here on an evening with the fabulous Thunderbirds on the next edition of Southwest Stages.